Hello, my name is Alan Panter. I'm a principal at Yo and Yo CPAs based in our Auburn Hills office. I'm a certified public accountant and a certified government finance, financial manager. I've been providing services, mainly audits, to governmental units such as libraries for over 30 years. Our firm was contracted with by the Library of Michigan in 2019 to revise the Public Library Financial Management Guide and also create these short webinars that cover a variety of library accounting topics. This webinar is intended to be a very basic overview of public library accounting that will hopefully be helpful to someone who is new to libraries, governments, or even accounting in general. Other webinars will assume some basic knowledge, but in this webinar we'll try not to assume any prior knowledge or background. This webinar is a companion to Chapter 1 of the Public Library Financial Management Guide, so please use this in conjunction with the more detailed information that is in Chapter 1 of the guide. So let's get started. In this webinar, we will talk about library accounting systems, why we have them, and what they are intended to accomplish. We will also talk about governmental accounting and financial reporting, which is very different from the accounting methods used by a nonprofit or private company. Uh, lastly, we'll get into defining some accounting transactions and accounts that are commonly seen in public libraries, as well as talk about journal entries and how those are used to record certain types of transactions in the library's general ledger. The purpose of an accounting system in a governmental library is in a governmental library environment is to accomplish three broad objectives. First, to demonstrate compliance with applicable legal provisions, of which there are many. Next, to show what the financial position of the library is at any point in time. In other words, to show how much money we have and how much we owe. And lastly, to present the operations, the results of operations over a period of time. In other words, to show how much money the library has received and how much it has spent. Those are pretty broad in terms of a purpose for an accounting system, but it's a start. Accounting in a public library is a multifunctional activity that includes gathering of financial information, recording and summarizing of the information that was gathered, analysis of accounting information, and to create a basis for internal and external financial reporting. Accounting transactions all need to be documented so the accounting system needs to include processes for maintenance of various source documents and a trail for how those documents are ultimately able to be traced back to the event that created them. Accounting transactions are summarized into accounts that group similar items together. All of the accounts in the library's accounting system are collectively referred to as the general ledger. Financial reporting is the process of presenting summarized financial information for internal or external purposes. Internal financial reporting is very much driven by the needs of decision makers such as the library director or the board. There's a lot of flexibility when it comes to internal financial reporting and really very few rules about how this is supposed to be accomplished. External financial reporting is much more formal and is governed by a very robust set of requirements and rules that we'll talk about on the next slide. Governmental public libraries are subject to many, many rules and requirements when it comes to accounting and financial reporting. The state of Michigan is the main driver of those requirements, but not the only one. There are other sources of rules as well. Accounting systems in public libraries are set up to satisfy these legal and financial reporting requirements by allowing activity to be tracked, summarized, and reported to the users of financial information, which are taxpayers, state and other oversight bodies, internal users, grantors, creditors, and employee groups. We recommend that all libraries use a computerized accounting system rather than a manual system. Some accounting software is inexpensive and simple to use, such as QuickBooks, and other packages are more robust, costly, and also capable. QuickBooks is an accounting system that we see a lot, but we don't recommend that public libraries use it except for the very smallest of libraries. The reason for that is QuickBooks does not require the use of account numbers, and the state of Michigan does require uniform account numbers to be used. 
Also, historical transactions can be changed with no paper trail, which we as auditors would never recommend, of course. And it is cumbersome to use for multiple funds as well. So we recommend using accounting software that is designed for multi-fund governmental use. There are several packages out there that are moderately priced and very user-friendly, so we would definitely recommend using one of those instead of a, a, a simpler packages such as QuickBooks. Governmental, governmental entities, such as public libraries, are fundamentally different from for-profit businesses, and therefore, the accounting and financial reporting is different. The Governmental Accounting Standards Board, the GASB, is the primary standard-setting body for governments and is recognized as the official source of generally accepted accounting principles, commonly referred to as GAAP, for state and local governmental entities. In order to meet the evolving needs of governmental financial statement users, the GASB issues standards and other communications that result in improved accounting and financial reporting. GASB standards and guidance can be found on their website at gasb.org. Governmental accounting is based on the concept of fund accounting. A fund is a separately identifiable and independent accounting unit with a self-balancing set of accounts. In other words, the sum of all the account balances in a given fund will equal zero. Each individual fund is created for the purpose of carrying on a specific type of activity. The GASB defines which type of fund must be used for certain types of activities and recommends that the fewest possible number of funds be used. Chapter one of the Financial Management Guide includes a discussion of the various fund types and how they are used. Basis of accounting, and I apologize, I've just skipped forward a couple of times. There we are. Basis of accounting refers to the timing of when transactions are recognized in the library's accounting system. The simplest and most easily understood method of accounting is the cash basis, which is similar to your checkbook at home. Revenues are recognized when they are received in cash, and expenditures are recognized when they are paid. Gap reporting for, financial, for governmental funds, however, is done on the modified accrual basis of accounting. In modified accrual basis accounting, revenues are recognized when they are measurable and available, not necessarily when the cash is received and expenditures are recognized when they are incurred, which is generally before they're paid. Full accrual basis accounting is used in proprietary funds, which are not common in public libraries, and the government-wide financial statement. Revenues are recognized when they are earned, and expenses are recognized when they're incurred, regardless of when the cash flow actually takes place. To keep the library's financial data organized, a system is developed that classifies transactions into groups of records called accounts. The accounts are broken down into categories of either balance sheet accounts or income statement accounts. Assets, liabilities, and fund balance are balance sheet accounts. These carry forward from year to year and never close at the end of the year. Revenues and expenditures are referred to as income statement accounts, and they are only open for a given fiscal period, and at the end of that fiscal period, generally a year, are closed or zeroed out, and the difference between the revenues and the expenditures is added to or subtracted from the fund balance at the end of the year. There are also the basic types of accounting transactions to be aware of. Those are cash receipts, cash disbursements, and payroll. All of these are fairly self-explanatory. Accounts receivable and accounts payable are related to the cash receipts and cash disbursement transaction types, respectively, and are used to account for differences in the timing of revenue or expenditure recognition, as we talked about in the last slide on the basis of accounting. Debits and credits and journal entries, oh my. I'm sure that most people have heard the terms debit and credit, and have probably heard references to journal entries as well. 
Every transaction in an accounting system is represented by debits and credits, and the debits and credits for every transaction are always equal to each other. This is one of the main features of what we call a double entry accounting system. A debit is a transaction that increases an asset or an expenditure account or decreases a liability or revenue account. A credit is the opposite. It increases a liability or revenue account or decreases an asset or expenditure account. Journal entries are used to record transactions that do not originate as a cash receipt, cash disbursement, payroll, or a billing in accounts receivable or, or an accounts payable invoice. Journal entries will always contain equal debits and credits in order to be a balanced transaction in our double entry accounting system. Types of journal entries are general journal entries, standard journal entries, and reversing journal entries. General journal entries are used to account for transactions that are non-recurring in nature, such as a correction of prior transactions or a reclassification of transactions that were made to incorrect accounts. Standard journal entries are used to record recurring transactions, such as payroll accruals, if those are not generated out of the payroll function. And reversing journal entries are used to record transactions in the correct period in order to avoid double counting of cash receipts or disbursements in the period after they're recognized. An example would be for the accrual of wages at year end. Employees earn their wages at the end of the year and are paid for them in the following year, just based on how the calendar falls in relation to the fiscal year end and each pay period. A journal entry would be used to record those wages in the period they're earned, and then another entry, a reversing entry, would be used in the following period to make sure the expense is not double counted into the period in which the wages are paid. With that, I think we're ready to conclude this webinar. Hopefully it has been helpful to you. Chapter one of the Financial Management Guide has more information on all of these topics that you can review at your leisure.